Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode on Premiere Pro 2020, I'm going to be showing you guys how to import footage into your project. So I've opened up uh, Premiere Pro here and I've created a project, I'm just calling this import just as a little test project. Right now I'm under assembly uh, layout. You can do this under editing layout as well if you if you wish. I kind of like doing assembly mode just to import when I'm importing my footage so I can take a look at uh, the footage and get a, it gives you a lot larger window than the editing layout does for your project panel. This is my project panel. It says project up here and then it's got the name of my project. That's the name of my project as well uh, but we're gonna let's start by importing you got a few different ways of importing media uh, we're going to go through some of the uh, uh, reasons why you'd want to use one or the other. And first of all, just the basic dra dragging and dropping footage in here. Uh, there's several different ways. First of all, you can go to File and go down to Import, and it's got a little shortcut right there. You can just click on this, and it will open up a browser window, and you can navigate and you can uh, navigate through folders, and you can import footage using your Explorer, or if you're on a Mac, using your Finder. Another way of doing this is uh, same thing for the shortcut, just hitting Control I, as I mentioned. You don't have to go to File. You can do Control or Command I, depending on if you're on a PC or a Mac. So Control I for PC, Command I for Mac, and it will open up. And now you, it will open up my browser window, and I can navigate through. I can navigate through my hard drives and find the footage that I want to import. Another way of doing this, uh, same thing, uh, just a di different method of doing it. If you, if you have nothing in here or if you have a blank area, if you already have media in here, if you go into a blank area of this window, a gray area, and just double click, it will also bring open your import window. So that's three different ways of getting your import window open here. And I'm going to go to one of my, I'm going to go to one of my folders here. I'm going to find some footage. I'm going to go under downloaded media folder here. I'm going to grab these JPEGs and import them. Just hit open and it brings them open and now those JPEGs have been imported into my into my project. And these are just some still photos here. If I double click on them, they view them over here in the source monitor. So if I want to import more media, I can do the same thing. I can do control I, I can double click down in this blank area, I can go to file, import. The other three of those methods are the exact same way, but this is one way I kind of like to do it. I like to open up my own folder here. If I'm on a PC, I can hit the, the start key or the Windows key, hold down Windows and hit E and it opens up my Explorer. Another way of doing that is just go down here and click on your folder and it will open it up as well. And I'm going to go to my hard drive and I'm going to find some media. And here's some MOV files. So with my Explorer window here, notice I've got this is separate from Premiere. So here's Premiere and here's my Explorer folder. But what I kind of like to do is just move that my Explorer over a little bit. And if you're working in a, on a Mac, this is the same with like with using your Finder. You would tab. You can use Command Tab to the to the Finder and then do Command N will make you a new Finder window. Uh, but I'm going to grab uh, let's say these three MOV files right here. I'm going to select the first one, hold down Shift and select this one, and it selects everything in between. And I'm going to grab this and you can just and I notice I pulled this a little bit over to the side from my project window, so I can simply drag this over, hover, and drop, and it will import those MOVs. There we go. And now I've got those MOVs imported. So now I've got some video footage. I've got some JPEGs imported. We're going to show you how to import some other things. Let's bring in some audio here. Here's my voice voice over here. That this, and uh, I'm going to dig through these folders and find, uh, here's a w, here's a WAV file, which is an audio file. I'm going to drag that over, hover over this, and let go and drop it in. And now I've got my audio file. One thing you're going to notice are these different types of icons over here. I'm going to get one more type of video here. I'm going to go get, I'm going to get some drone footage here. A couple of these drone files here into my timeline into my project window. Now, you've got all these different icons here. Uh, what I'm going to do is, over in this area here, I'm going to hit at the very top of my keyboard, not on the numpad, but on the very top, just above my letter P here, I've got my minus and my plus key. If you hit your plus or minus while you're in your project window, notice what th this does. It makes your icons bigger or smaller. I'm hitting plus to make them bigger, minus to make them smaller. And this has three basic uh, heights that you can use. Here's the first one, two, three. So I've got two, three different sizes. So if you want them larger, you can, but I'm going to put them a little bit larger just so we can kind of see uh, what these files are, what, what these icons mean. Right now I'm in list view here. Uh, if you're in icon view, it's going to show thumbnails instead. But I'm going to move back to my list view for, for a moment here. But if you're in icon view, it's going to show thumbnails here. But I'm going to go back to my list view to talk about these little icons right here. Uh, first of all, this will tell you the nature of this file. This little uh, little shape figure that they have is for things like JPEGs, bitmaps, uh, just still images. As you move down here, I've got the next one. This has a film strip and then has a 
audio waveform next to it. That basically means this is video that has audio combined with it. So this is uh, the film strip represents a video file, and then this uh, waveform represents audio. So these three are like that. Then you move down here. This was shot on a drone, so the drones do not shoot audio. Most drones do not shoot audio. Uh, so this is just a film strip. It's showing just a video clip with no audio tracks associated with it. Now as we move down to this one here, this here is just the waveform, meaning that this is just a wave file. There's a few other icons that you'll see as you import different types of media, but these are the main ones right, right here that you'll uh, oftentimes see, just so you know what those symbols mean as you import them. I'm going to do minus minus, get, get that back down to the size there. Now, next thing I kind of want to talk about here is some of the structures that you will find on some cameras that you shoot on. Oftentimes when you shoot Oftentimes when you shoot on a uh, camera, depending on the type of camera that you're shooting on, uh, you're going to have to kind of go through, dig through the folders to find where your media is at. If you're shooting on a cell phone, if you're shooting on a professional camera, if you're shooting on, on a drone, it's going to have its own way of organizing media. And oftentimes there's something associated with the media called metadata. So you want to be careful. A lot of people, what they will do is when they shoot on a camera is they'll dig into the camera's folders, find just the media and transfer that over. But they're also getting rid of all the metadata when they do that. So you got to be kind of careful doing that. So what I recommend doing is organizing your footage like this. Let's go under this raw dumps folder here. Uh, under here we've got a some footage that was shot on a 5D Mark III. We've got some footage that was shot on a Sony F3 and some footage that was shot on a RED. If you double click on one of these, you open it up. You've got all this information in here that's just not the media files. If you go into the red footage, you've got a whole bunch of folders in here and a certain type of structure. You've got to be careful not just going in and grabbing these items and dragging them out. You're going to ruin your footage and your metadata if you do that. So what I recommend doing, this is what you see on the camera card right here of, of a red camera, all, all these items right here. So you're just going to, when you're transferring them over to your hard drive from the SSD card that you shot on, you're going to do Control or Command A and select all. Control C and copy, then you're going to make a new folder for it, whether it's card one, card two, card three. Here's an instance down here. If we go under the red footage here, we have card one, and then all the footage for card one, card two, and all the footage for card two, and so on. All that footage was dumped into each one of these card folders. So you make a unique folder uh, for every single time you dump a card, and you give it a unique name for every time you dump a, a, a specific uh, card onto your project. Now, so when you're importing footage, uh, one thing you can do, if you don't want to dig through all those folders uh, and find where your media is, you can go under that, uh, that card folder that you're looking at, and you can just simply grab a folder. Let's grab this uh, the F3 here, and rather than dig through this and try to find the media and figure out where the media is, I can just go back to that folder right here, my F3, and I can just drag it over, hover, drop it into Premiere. And Premiere is going to dig through all those folders and find where the legitimate media is. It will likely bring you up an error message saying, I don't know what some of this stuff is. You just say, that's fine. You hit OK. Now I arrow this down. And it's going to maintain the same folder structure. And you can, uh, and eventually you'll arrow down and you'll find your media. And there's my media right there. So if I want to reorganize this, I can select all these. Hold down. I've got the top one selected. Hold down Shift. Click the bottom. And it selects all of them. I can drag this out of that CLPR folder and drag it up to the F3 folder, drop it in there, and now it's in my F3 folder, and I'm going to highlight this clipper folder and delete it, and there, I, now I don't have to dig through the folder again. But it, it, that's a quick way of importing your footage where it just digs through all the metadata, digs through all the information, and just finds the clips that, it, that Premiere will recognize and use. Now another issue, and we're kind of getting a little bit away from this, but there are still some cameras, like the RED camera, that shoot on a universal uh, formatted SSD card that's formatted into a FAT32 format. Basically what that means is it's an older uh, uh, kind of DOS format that uh, of format, formatting hard drive, where, but uh, one of the limitations of those types of cards is they only will allow up to four gig increments, uh, four, four gigabyte files is the limit. So if you shoot footage, especially on a RED camera, it's going to definitely shoot over four gigabytes at some time. So this is a little bit weird with Premiere. You can't just basically go to a folder where you find some RED footage and grab that RED footage and drop it into your project. Watch what happens. And I'll show you the nature of the RED files and show you why it's doing this. And hit OK. Arrow this down, arrow this down here, and it's got all these kind of disorganized folders and a whole bunch of other different files in here. It's kind of a mess. So if I arrow this down, it's got... One thing that you'll notice about these two clips here is I go over to the metadata on the side, and all the metadata is exactly the same. It's the exact same duration. These have the exact same... Uh, these, these things have the exact same duration. Basically, these are the exact same clip, but it brought in duplicates of it, and it kind of doesn't understand it. So there's a better way of importing uh, footage that is like red footage. Let's show you quickly uh, what the red footage folder looks like. And uh, every, like I said, every camera is going to kind of have its own 
de determinate way of getting the footage into Premiere. But if I go under this, this is my card folder right here. It oftentimes starts with the real number or the card number. This is A004. You can rename those in the red camera, You can, uh, or you can just ignore them if you want. But if I double click on that, it's got a folder, and each one of these folder is, each one of these folders contains all the information for one individual clip. For, that means they hit record and hit stop, and it saved it as one individual clip. So if I go into one of these folders, let's go under, let's go under clip number two right here. It's A004 uh, is the real number, and then here's the clip number right there. And I'm going to double click on this, and it's got a few items in here. It's got basically a metadata file, and then it's got clip one and clip two. Notice this one built up to almost, till almost got to four gigabytes, and then it started writing a second file. It has the exact same name, but it has 002, so it's the second portion of the same clip. This clip, when it gets done playing, it just moves over to this clip and starts playing this one. Like I said, this is a limitation of the FAT32 SSD card um, um, format that's still being used by RED, and, and uh, most cameras are getting away from using that and starting to go to XFAT, which has unlimited file size, I believe, or which doesn't have that same fi uh, file size limitation. So what we need to do, all you really need to do is just bring in one of these clips and it will read, it, read everything in, the, in that folder um, as one individual clip. A little confusing, but, but this is the best way to import red footage. I'm going to delete this folder here, and we're not going to drag and drop. We're not going to use the import function. We're going to go through another way of here, and that is the media browser. The next tab over is called the media browser. Under the media browser, it'll bring up all the hard drives on your computer that are attached to your computer even network drives. I'm going to move my mouse over this window and hit tilde, which is above the tab key, uh, and that will make this window go large. Uh, but now I'm going to find my footage that I need. And that one was on my stuff drive. You can double click on these folders to get into them. I kind of like using using my arrow keys to navigate these folders. If you do arrows up and down, it's going to just naturally go up and down between those uh, the drive letters there. If you do arrow right, it will open a folder. If you do arrow left, it will close a folder. So I'm going to do arrow right, open up this folder, and move down to where, and move down to my next folder. That, And now I'm going to do arrow right to expand that folder, and keep arrowing down until I find my footage folder here. Go under raw dumps, hit arrow right, go down to my red footage, arrow right, Go down to the um, go down to the real number folder and arrow right and wait for it. And you remember under this folder it had all those clip folders and all the metadata and all the separate clips. Rather than bring up all that confusing information, it just brings up the information that it understands. And here is your media right there. And now I can select the media that I want to import. Uh, you can actually do this in list view if you wish down here, or you can do it in icon view up, up here as well. Uh, we can increase the size if we want to look at take a better look at thumbnails. And we say we want to get a uh, certain footage here. Let's say I want to get this shot, and I can hold down Control or it would be Command on on a Mac, and I can select individual files and now those are those four are highlighted if I right click on those on one on one of these and say import it will now import my footage into my project and there they are here's my media that it just imported you can use a media browser if you rather than use the Explorer or finder if you wish I find personally it's a lot easier if you're using the red camera or cameras that are similar to the red camera to use the media browser and then when you're using uh, if you're using things like DSLR like DSLRs mirrorless cameras phones or, or other types of cameras or a camera that does not use a fat 32 system uh, to record onto you can just simply grab the folder and drag it over and drop it and it will import and it will import that entire uh, the, and the entire contents of that camera into your into Premiere and it's got the folder here and then you just have to kind of go down through these folders and find there's all the JPEGs all the MOVs that were on that one uh, in that one camera folder and now once all your media is inside you can start you can start organizing your media you can select ranges of your clips here like I said I like the organizing in list view and uh, let's say I want to put these three in one folder I'm going to drag it down to my folder and drop it on my folder and drop those in a new folder I'm going to call my folder 5D footage or something like that, whatever you want to call it. And then I can grab my JPEGs, drag and drop those into another folder, and call these stills and so on. In a future episode I have coming up, I will show you guys how to how to do the organization of your media within your project window. But for now, that shows you a couple different methods of importing your footage into Premiere so you can get started on your editing.